The kōtuku, or white heron, is dear to the hearts of many New Zealanders with its beautiful plumage and elegant silhouette. The only place it breeds is here at the Waitangaroto Nature Reserve on the west coast where local tour operator Dion Arnold spends his days taking people to see these striking birds. In Maori mythology, they were quite a rare bird. To see one once in their lifetime was a great honour, real good fortune. And we've also only had a small number of these birds in New Zealand, mostly because they've only got one nesting site, just here in the Waitangi Roto Nature Reserve. There's all different stages of nesting going on, chicks that are only a few days old, right through to chicks that are now learning to fly and find their own food. The nesting season gets spread out because of the weather patterns coming through. In the early springtime we can have quite a few storms coming through up the west coast and that'll spread the nesting out as some nests are unsuccessful the first time round so birds will re-nest. So late in the season, this time of the year now as we've got chicks starting to learn to fly, we've also got young chicks hatching every day still. You say that they only breed here. Are they? Do people see them elsewhere around New Zealand? Yeah, the white heron will spread right over New Zealand in the winter months. So they're only in this nesting site through the spring and summer. It's about six months of the year. And then at the end of the summer, February, March, they'll be dispersing and they will spread right through New Zealand over the autumn and winter. The white heron share their nesting site here and the little shag or cormorant get right in amongst the herons. The herons don't seem to mind sharing their sites with them and they can be nests almost touching each other at times, good neighbours. And up above them and around the edges you'll find royal spoonbill and yeah, they seem to be attracted to the site as well. Back in the 1940s, the, the birds were being hunted. They were taken for their feathers. Uh, to supply demand for hats and in the mid-1940s, 1944, only four nest sites were recorded in the nesting site itself here. From there the numbers have slowly increased and we're back up to an average of 40 nesting pair now. How to start working with the local tour operator to protect the colony? It provides security, which is very important. Um, it's an inaccessible area. They also do some very important monitoring work for us. So, their annual report gives us a very good idea of how the colony is developing, what the population of the birds is like in particular years, and uh, we can see trends from that. There are stoats around the area here, and we have traps set along our track and where we're running the boat down the river here, and we keep a regular check on those to keep the stoat numbers down. Stoats could potentially get into the nest here and take eggs or chicks from the nest. It's a unique site, it's an amazing place, a really special site. It's a privilege to work here and visit it every day. For many people, the closest they'll get to seeing a kotuku is on a $2 coin. But if you're on the west coast and you have a chance to come and see these striking birds, then I'd highly recommend this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.